lately I've seen many of these component testers all over the internet. Um, they're shipped from China usually and they cost about 13 bucks quit, including shipping. Um, this one came without a battery, so I stuck like a cheap as Huang Hang Lo battery in there as well. Um, it looks like it's an Atmel 328P in there, like a normal 8 bit AVR processor, same ones you find on the Arduino. And um, if you turn it around, you can see an ISP header in here, unpopulated. Um, so usually they would have um, like 10 pins in there, and you would be able to program the um, chip in there without having like an Arduino bootloader or something. It's the usual way you go when you want to um, upload software to an AVO microcontroller. So the whole design seems pretty straightforward. I don't really like that we have like a flap and cable on this screen. It seems like it's very fragile and might be falling apart very soon uh, because something will just hit it and it will stop communicating with the display. And also if you look on the side you can see there's LED, an LED so uh, it's backlit. That's very good. So you can work under low light conditions as well. Um, it just has two buttons, turning off and test, and they seem to be quite okay. Um, and also you have this kind of stick down thing, I forgot the name of it. You can put in components, then push down this little handle and uh, it will make contact with all of the leads in there. Um, yeah, it now shows me that there's no an unknown or damaged component in there. Um, also, I find it's quite interesting that um, it has kind of like a transformer logo popping up when it's starting up. I've got no clue what it means. Uh, it kind of reminds me of the transformer logo. Logo. Um, so you turn it off and it's off. Turn it back on just by press just pressing test. Um, I want to test it with some components. Um, I've got a range of capacitors. Um, we've got like a 470 microfarad and a 10,000 microfarad capacitor as well as a 680 a 6.8 nanofarad capacitor also I want to test it with resistors that's a 15k resistor and a 150 ohm resistor in addition to that I have two transistors Starlink transistors one is an NPN and the other is a PNP also, I've got some LEDs, so I'll just test um, like a rat one because they get a very low forward voltage and a blue one or white one because they've got pretty high forward voltages. So, just start off by putting a capacitor in here. This one is new and unused, so it should have about 470 microfarads of capacity. So, just test, a uh, press test. We'll take a few seconds, it's showing okay. 9.7 volt, the battery is okay. It's testing now. Yep, and there's a capacitor. V loss 0.5%, 506 microfarad, and a 0 0.05 ohms electrostatic resistance. That one seems to be kind of in range. I mean, the capacitor is not exactly 407 microfarad, it's rated for 470 microfarad. And um, it was unused, so it might have a little bit more. Now test, uh, we'll test one of these uh, cheap Chinese uh, 10,000 microfarad capacitors from the brand JKEC. I've got no clue, you will find them all over on AliExpress. I um, hope they've got 10,000 microfarads or just like something in the range of that and not like standard 1,000 microfarad and now change the name of it, change the labeling of it. So it starts up as well, it's testing, it might take a little bit longer because it's probably charging up the capacitor just to see how much will fit in there. Okay. Oh! 0.9% VLOS. And it's almost 10,000 microfarads. And that's very good, I think. And get no electric static resistance. Yeah, probably the equipment is not really too good in testing it. But, I mean... That's pretty accurate, so kind of surprised that both of these devices work. 
especially this capacitive tester or multi-component tester because normally um capacitor testers only go up to like a thousand microfarad or something i don't know why but this one it says a data sheet will go up to 10,000 microfarad and it did or almost did now this is a tip 127 darlington transistor we'll put it in here test it might show that everything is okay Yep, it is. It's a bipolar junction transistor, PNP. Uh, it will tell me that pin 1 on the left side is um, base, and then we've got a middle collector. A collector and a middle. Um, it got 38 times um, amplification, I would say. And uh, 1.36 volts forward voltage. Same one with uh, tip 122 um, Darlington transistor. Test it. And it works like a charm. It really does. Um, the only thing that kind of annoys me is that it automatically, it automatically turns itself off again. Um, I don't quite like it because booting it up takes a while. I'm, I really think that uh, if you don't have this splash screen telling you who invented that thing or the software for it, um, it would start up faster, and that might be better for just going on testing, testing, testing. And also, I just recognized that um, we've got like uh, the ability to test surface mount components. That's very good as well. Resistors. So let's test whether this thing is able to test our 15k resistor. <laughs> and uh, you know what? I think we have to use like a piece of wire or something to stick it in there because this resistor is kind of big. So uh, don't judge me, but this is a piece of solder. <laughs> so I'll uh, we'll just put it in there, wrap it around, and hope that it makes good contact. Okay, so start it up. Start it up. Um, it's testing. And it's a resistor 14.73k. That's accurate. Got a resistor, which is uh, uh, 150 ohms. That won't fit in there as well, I think. Nope, it, it won't. It will. It will. It will? Will it? We're gonna see. Yep, yeah, there we go. Does it test it the right way? What's the result? No unknown or damaged device. Uh, I don't think it makes too good of a contact with all of those things, or we're not able to populate too many different um, pins on that device. Yep, 153 ohms resistor. Accurate. Now let's let's come to the most tricky part of all of these things. It's a 6.8 nanofarad capacitor. And um, that might be a little low for this device to detect, but um, we're gonna see. I mean, it might just uh, might use the ten bit ADC built into the um Atmo controller. So um, I don't see any additional ADC on here or an op amp or something. So uh, it might only have an accuracy of five millivolts on this range because it's a ten bit ADC. The thing is running at 5 volts, I think, so uh, we get about 5 uh, millivolts. Holy crap. Wow. That's pretty accurate. Okay. So yeah, um, we only get like 5 millivolts of accuracy in this ADC, with this ADC, but that might be good enough. I don't know. I mean, seems to work, so it's fine. Um, yeah, red LED. Should have a pretty low voltage. Put it in there. Let's see if it works. Oh, it just lit up. Saw it flashing. Yep. It's a diode or light emitting diode. Uh, two picofart capacity. Like, they always have a tiny capacity. Uh, leakage current, is it? Two nanoamps. And a 1.9 volt forward voltage. Let's test. Uh, I think it's a blue LED, but it could be a white one as well. We're gonna see. 
Looks like there's phosphor in it, so there might be a white one. Should be about 3 volt, 4 voltage. 2.91, yep. There we go. I mean, that's a 4 voltage to just get current through it. Uh, if you light it up um, and try to put like 20 milliamps through it, as you usually do with this 5 millimeter LEDs, you will have like 3.2 3 volts um, with this LED because mostly the Chinese LEDs have quite a high foot voltage because they're just crappy, but they're good enough for most of your project. So, uh, to conclude, we could basically say that this component tester is perfect and many people should have one of these. Um, I didn't want to buy one because it was like 15 bucks uh, just like a few weeks ago. And I didn't see the need to do uh, like to use it, but it's quite useful to find out whether a component is broken or whether an unlabeled component is uh, what you think it is. Or I think I'll use it way more often than I thought I would. Really like this component. Really like this component tester. I really like this component tester.